Hello everybody, it has been about three weeks since I left home and I'm currently up in Montana right now. I stopped by Yellowstone National Park and Glacier National Park. I didn't stop by too many places because I, I'm pretty much been through all of them uh, past like eight years traveling in my car. Uh, but today I kind of want to take some time and talk about my um, charging system for my EcoFlow because most of the viewers uh, in past couple months are here because of the EcoFlow. This is not my first time being on the road with this EcoFlow. Um, I've been on the road for maybe seven to eight years now, uh, four to six months out of the year. And with the EcoFlow, it has been about two to two and a half years um, using this unit. Before that, I purchased uh, like hundred dollar, three hundred watt hour, um, this really cheap power station, so I can just test it out on the road. Um, and then I finally um, took a bullet and then purchased this unit with the, all the Amazon reward credit card points I had saved up. So I think I paid about fifteen hundred for this unit um, when it came out. The only reason I chose EcoFlow at the time was that the EcoFlow was the only company that was offering lithium phosphate batteries. Even though I wanted to stick with uh, US-based uh, battery manufacturers like Go Zero or Zachary, but they didn't have any of the lithium phosphate for their offering. The reason that I wanted to get the lithium phosphate battery at that time was that the, the lithium phosphate battery has very long life cycle. So I can use it many, many more years before it degrades. And also I heard that the lithium phosphate battery is very stable battery. So even though my truck or my car gets really hot, uh, it's not gonna catch on fire and blow up because sometimes I go to like Death Valley or or somewhere in the desert uh, which um, it will heat my car up a lot so my battery is right here and I will show you a couple things that is connected to my battery um, I got this 700 watt uh, microwave from sharp this is about 25 years old and so far it's working pretty good uh, it's my first time having a microwave in my car and here is my 12 volt refrigerator I'm having a lot of problem with this refrigerator right now because it is draining my battery a lot. And it is connected to my battery almost every day. Never get disconnected. It's on 24-7. Under here, I got rice cooker and a slow cooker. Um, the rice cooker, I use a lot for cooking rice and sometimes cooking up noodles in that. Um, it takes about 300 watts. Works pretty good. Um, and other than that, I don't really have anything else that is connected to the battery. The problem I'm having with that Chinese refrigerator is a whole new different story. I might have to get a new refrigerator. Um, I'm currently talking to them through the email, but they're not giving me any help. So as you guys know, I connected my EcoFlow to my car battery about a month ago before I left. And since then, I've been using it every day for multiple hours and everything still works good. My comment section were very skeptical about the setup. So I made another video showing that there is nothing that will probably burn my car down and everything will be okay. But nobody watches that video. So hopefully you guys can just you know believe what I say. One comment said that this setup will kill my battery, and he was right. Um, I killed my battery about four times. I need to jump start. I need to roll kick start. But the only reason I killed the battery is not because of the setup. Um, it's just me being stupid and not forgetting to turn off the relay. This button doesn't do anything. This button is for my EcoFlow. And when I'm driving, I normally turn this on. But when I shut off my car, I forget to turn this, and then I just leave and I come back to a dead battery. So in order for me to fix that problem, I install a little beeper into my fuse where it connects to this button. So if this button is on when my car is off, it makes I install the beeper so that stupid me never forget to turn it off when I turn off my car. And ever since, my battery never died. 
Oh. And my EcoFlow is also powering my LED lights up top. Each of the lights is 10 watts. I normally turn on maybe like two of them or three of them because they're so bright. I have this uh, makeshift um, light diffuser because it's so bright. And I can dim it with this. And when I dim it all the way, at night, it's still bright, but it only takes about one or two watts. One other thing is this combustion gas detector and I have a button right here. I can turn it on whenever I want. And the only reason I have it is I have a 10 pound propane tank in my cab. Somebody's gonna say I shouldn't put my propane tank in the cab because I can die. But I will show you how I put it there kind of safely. Um, even though it might be very controversial, I have never seen anybody do this. Um, so if you guys want to see it, just leave a comment down below. Uh, I will show you what I did. There are a couple of things I just don't like about EcoFlow, how they designed the battery. Um, it's not something that is so serious, but it's just my opinion. The first thing is how they position their ports. Um, I have the ESP ports in the front and in the back, I have the 110 and 12 volts and I have all the inputs in the back. And so far you can see, I can get to my ESP easy. But in the back, I cannot access my ports. If you're using this in your house, it's not too much of a problem because you got so much room, you can kind of move it around. But for me, building this jail cell, I had to build around the how EcoFlow designed their battery bank. In order for me to remedy this problem, um, this 12 volt line that connects my uh, fan, never get disconnected, is always on there. My 12 volt cigarette jack is right here and I can use button to turn it on and turn it off. And I got three ports in there. And I also have, so I have the extension cable that connects to the back of the EcoFlow and has many ports. So I can use the 110 plug without reaching back there. Even though there are many things that is plugged into that one plug, um, it's okay because I'm, I don't really use more than one thing at a time. So it's not gonna overload the one plug on the EcoFlow. Recently, they came out with this new Delta series. Um, they move all of the plugs into the front, but they still have the plugs in the back. So for me, it will be still be annoying to get to. The second thing I hate about the EcoFlow is that their 12 volt system sucks. And most people who use the power station for their 110 volts, yeah, they have no problem. But most of people like me who use it in their cars or camping vans or whatnot that uses the 12 volt, um, like the refrigerators and 12 volt fans and 12 volt lights, it only provides up to like 120 watts of power on the on the cigarette jack plug and that's not much so my refrigerator uses about 60 to 80 watts and my led strips here uses 10 watts each and i got six of them so use 60 watts so when everything is running my lights on at full brightness so it will overload the ecoflow and the, my ecoflow is not happy and i'm not happy I just don't get why they have to limit their port to 120 watts because as far as I know, the whole battery bank is based on the 12 volt system. So it feels like they can do so much to increase the amperage uh, that can be out from that port. But 120 watts is the max. Goddamn flies are making baby in my car. But anyhow, it's going to take me a couple more weeks to get used to this setup. I still got a couple more days to stay here or wait for my friends to come from Virginia. So I'm gonna be just be eating and sleeping and doing nothing. Uh, just watching YouTube videos and get fat. So um, thanks for watching my video. If you guys got any more questions, leave down the below. I will try my best to answer all of them. And please subscribe and like this video for me, please. Thank you so much.